Hi guys, uh, so this is a quick video to cover uh, some of the differences in the ELK2 plugin, um, how it's changed uh, from ELK1. Uh, I still think it's a good idea if you kind of go through the example for ELK1, and it kind of exposes a bit more explicitly, you know, the different categories. But if you kind of understand what you're looking for, then ELK2 has a much more kind of simplified and streamlined uh, interface. Okay, so uh, obviously um, first you can go to um, OpenStreetMap and uh, to find, uh, download the OpenStreetMap data, OSM data. And let's say we're going to Las Vegas, Vegas baby, and uh, we'll go and probably look for the strip, which is uh, somewhere around, let's say here, for example, right, the Mirage. This is a Vegas strip, okay? Um, I have no idea how accurate the data here is. Anyways, but uh, you just go to up here, export, uh, manually select a different area. This can allow you to kind of maybe more accurately, right, select the extents of like what you really want to get, uh, what you want to export, like that, okay? Click on export, and it should basically start downloading that data. Okay, this is then too big, right? Uh, request a smaller area in this case. So let's maybe do it smaller. Try that. See if that works. Okay. So that's about 10 megabytes. Uh, I am actually going to pull that onto my desktop and just rename it uh, Vegas dot OSM okay so uh, now that's done and so here uh, if you have elk 2 installed uh, it should show up in your extra tab right so sort of next store to the original elk one right and um, it only has kind of three components we're actually just using actually these two so the first one to pop in is the location the second one is the OSM data and essentially this is the one component that's kind of replaced uh, like a bunch of these all right and the file everything else here is actually just the same uh, we go to params parameters and uh, primitive right we can pull down the file path right here and link it in okay I'm gonna set this right click set one existing file and go search from my desktop where I put the vegas.osm data so this is me linking that in all right so these actually just correlate one to one so this to this this to this actually pretty directly okay it's gonna once I pull this in it's gonna kind of freeze because it's sort of processing that information um, and something will pop up. Let me try to get my screen back. Okay. When that happens, sometimes you just have to minimize and maximize Rhino back again to get it back. And this is all sort of like point data. Okay. Um, so the major difference uh, here, actually, this gives you the latitude and longitude readout. So you can, you know, put a panel here. It will give you the latitude and longitude readouts of the area that you've decided that you've downloaded um, to get rid of this top header you can just right click and uh, not draw paths or draw indices basic, basically kind of uncheck these two it becomes a sort of more simple uh, text box and we use these kind of for readouts all the time just as a way to kind of display information right so this stuff, um, when you first pull it in generically, uh, it doesn't really, it actually, at least in this case, it defaulted to the building, right, feature type, right, so which is good. These are all kind of the buildings in the area. If you want more, then copy paste. It'll still kind of lag or think a while because it's kind of duplicating those points again, right. Um, and what you do is actually instead of uh, kind of finding different types, right click right in the sort of center portion. And what you'll find is that you get to choose 
uh, in this sort of pull down menu what kind of feature you're looking for right so let me kind of move this up just so you can see so right click click on the pull down and what you'll find is probably for example uh, if we're looking for highway okay and let it run uh, let it sort of bring in the data points All right, so these guys are all the highway kind of related sort of data points, right? Now, what I do suggest actually is to hi uh, hide these, Control Q, just hide these to make that sort of, you know, processing process go faster. Like, you don't have to wait for it to kind of try to draw things, right? But actually just use the polyline command, this, uh, the polyline component, okay? and just pull those points into the polyline so you immediately you'll see okay these are the building outlines because they're building outlines we typically want these polylines to be closed right they want to kind of make a full circle and close themselves so I will double click find a boolean toggle so the true false boolean toggle put into here and actually toggle these to true right because you want the sort of boundary of the building to come back and actually join and kind of close on itself right so not all of these are going to close because some of these data points might be really small or um, they just might not close completely okay so don't worry about this but you kind of have the general gist of things um, over here all right um, and then same thing for let's say uh, the highways down here right so this immediately brings these in uh, all the highway sort of uh, roads essentially right now for the highway sort of type uh, I actually make this false because sometimes what you'll get is that you know this end of the highway tries to connect the beginning of something else right it kind of actually really messes it up so for several different data types you'll have to figure out whether or not this should be toggled to true uh, or false so uh, that brings stuff in and um, sometimes maybe uh, we can look at and because these aren't explicitly called out it's actually kind of a good idea sometimes for you to actually right click here and say buildings tag them highways right for example okay and if I'm going to kind of make a new copy of this control C control V might take a couple of seconds for it to respond because there's a lot of you know lines and data being drawn in there that it's trying to kind of calculate through if it does this just like minimize maximize it back okay and it will come out and this one for example maybe I'll switch the feature type to let's say natural right sort of you know natural geographic features same thing, right? It might take a couple seconds. You can kind of rename this natural, right? Um, and you'll see this kind of outline some of the little water ponds and things like that, right? So that's what these are, right? These, because they tend to be closed like outlines, so this is probably toggled to true. So these sort of bodies of water, right, essentially um, are kind of self contained. Yeah. So that's kind of the basic gist. Now I can kind of go Ill slightly more into detail. For example, um, if we're looking at a specific uh, subtype within these larger types. So uh, under highways, right, this is kind of the catch-all. But if you look at, let's say, select feature subtypes, then you'll see we get uh, sort of some of the sub-features within it, right? Um, when you don't set these it basically c includes like everything right like all you know all the sort of like uh, road related kind of features all fall under this highway category right but for example as soon as I start to select a feature subtype so for example if I go to primary right and add it over here okay uh, and secondary and add it over here uh, then you'll see we lose a lot of stuff because we're only filtering for those two types, right? So we're only filtering for primary and secondary in this case, 
Okay, so that's what's left over, right? And uh, if you show individual outputs, then it actually will pull out the primary and secondary as individual, right? Those two that I've selected as individual one. So this one actually is, this is the primary. And in this case, you would have to copy paste another one, pull the secondary over here. And these are the secondary, right? So it actually, basically you, you, you yourself have to have to, will have to kind of go through and pick like what kind of feature types am I looking at and you know particularly uh, specifically right so uh, this is good for analysis of like okay I'm only looking at this type of thing or that type of thing uh, sometimes perhaps like for buildings because if you go to into the buildings you can click on subtypes and you'll get you know all the different I'm only, only looking at uh, like hotels for example show individual right and so these are the ones that in there that have been categorized as hotels okay now if you want to get back go back then you essentially take uh, remove and uncheck that and it should go back to the sort of default behavior you have to give it a sec right so well, okay then it goes back to default behavior to get back all that stuff okay um, let's see one thing sometimes you can try is to see if the sort of 3D height data for buildings for that particular region that you're in works or not. Um, sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not. Uh, you kind of have to like see depending on where you are in this case. And um, if a uh, things get unruly or you're not sure where to zoom in to, right? It's always sort of helpful to do this. So highlight, you know, the output, middle mouse button, click on the zoom selected portion, right, to get an idea. And these, since I picked that, so this actually shows us that we kind of have some uh, 3D uh, massing information. So to get this 3D massing information, uh, I go to the, my, your primitives, geometry, BREP, boundary representations, pull that in, and voila, for Las Vegas, we have some decent actual 3D massing. Uh, that's part of the OpenStreetMaps data. Great. Uh, Obviously, you'll see that like there are still some outlines like this, right, where the outline's there, but the building massing data or the height kind of isn't there, right? They only kind of have height data for some of the primary massing, but not some of the secondary ones, okay? So just be aware of that. You'll have to kind of go ahead and extrude or model those, well, extrude those parts yourself. Um, and the last thing, so that's 3D sort of building data. The last thing is over here where these are actually keys essentially um, if you put them in these actually will give you a lot of the information that's kind of embedded uh, inside here now at the moment you have no way of sorting or being able to know okay which piece of this correlates but they uh, will get into some of this but essentially you can kind of take data and tag it to things that are in the map uh, geographically so they'll kind of float next to it right but as you can kind of see there's a lot of whether it's like heights how many stories it is um, with each piece of this data so um, if you're able to kind of transfer some of the tabs over to the locations that can actually be uh, quite useful um, same stuff exists for everything down whoops uh, exists for uh, all this stuff that's down here as well so uh, let me get some of these guys out right if you pull in the panel and you just look at keys, then it will also give you information on the roads, highway, primary, how it's categorized, things like that, as well as this. You know, what what of these features are what they are, amenity fountain at the volcano, right? What sort of, right? So there's a lot of kind of embedded metadata, but sometimes these are just fairly generic. Natural water, palm tree, et cetera, et cetera. Right. Really quickly, I'm also going to show uh, actually how to do the text tags in locations. Um, basically, kind of put this information next to where it should be. Um, 
So it's actually very simple. Uh, you'll notice that I actually like backed out or I um, deselected the create 3D buildings in this case because it would just kind of create a separate input. We want um, essentially to align the number of points or uh, I, less, I guess things here to correlate with the number of polylines, you know, outlines that we're looking at. Okay, so um, essentially here there's like what 27, 29 values, right? And uh, very simply, all of these, right? We just actually we're just gonna grab its area centroid. So double click area. We do a simple area analysis of all these, so they'll get a sort of area centroid that we'll use as the tag point. Um, if I pull this a little wider, if you go to display. Um, under dimensions, you'll find a text tag 3D uh, sort of t uh, component. And here, uh, under location of the text tag, we're just actually going to use the area centroid, which is all these little dots here, right? We'll use that as the location to tag things. And then the text that we want to tag in is essentially this, right? So we can actually just pass this over here. Okay, now you may not see anything because the sort of relative scale of this uh, uh, file is really large because I opened it in millimeters. So sometimes just to kind of get a sense, you might just like measure something and that's like what, 18,000 millimeters, okay? So my units here actually are kind of a little bit off, but I'm actually just gonna put in like, you know, uh, double slash 10,000 as a number and use this actually as the sort of text size or height right instead of one change it and you'll see that all the text like popped in now uh, there's still one issue right this is building yes levels five like you'll see the one issue is that um, it basically kind of overlaps everything into the same place okay so um, at the moment and there's no at least as far as I know there's no easy way to make it kind of you know um, spread it out or move by you know basically return become multi-line code right but at the same time if you're kind of going through and saying okay well I want to figure out like how some of these if they have the data then how many stories they are just for extrusion you could kind of just easily like bake all these tags let's say uh, bake these onto you know a sort of layer of its own and if I close the grasshopper sort of preview then even these ones that these are kind of pretty obvious right so yes there's a building there we know oh actually these are grouped right you can kind of tell building levels five um, you know if you really wanted to you could kind of separate out these and use that as a reference to extrude uh, some of these uh, outlines that we're looking at um, these guys okay so then in this case you have the building outlines and oftentimes maybe too much information to be able to see but that's just kind of how it, this works right now okay so uh, yeah that's it for uh, Elk 2, right, is just a kind of different, slightly different um, interface, and it just, you have to know what you're looking for. Um, the version I've posted online on our Canvas site is a bit more organized and kind of gives you the descriptions for uh, each sort of step and what you can do. That's it.